<laughs> Welcome back to the Bookends Channel to me. <laughs> Look, we're together again. Yeah, I haven't words in a long time. <laughs> in a social isolation distancing way, whatever it's called. Yeah, it's it's weird, but um, yeah, so we're back. We are doing videos from more than six feet apart. <laughs> yes. Um, so today we're going to talk about query tips, our best And for query those tips. who are new, I'm Jessica Faust. And I'm James McGowan. Today we're going to talk about our top 10 query tips. So we've got a list in front of us. We're kind of just going to go down the list and um, we'll try and keep that same bouncing off each other energy that we do in person. Um, okay, so the first one is probably my number one tip is always to know who you're querying. Yep. Um, the name, the agency, the genre they represent. Probably my biggest pet peeve is getting something to the wrong name for something I don't represent to the wrong agency, <laughs> any combination of all three of those. I mean, basically do some research. Don't just go, I know there are resources where you can just find lists of names. Don't just go there, you know, go to the agency's website, um, find out not just the names of the agents and the names of the agency, but confirm that they are representing the type of book, at least the genre. It doesn't have to be an exact manuscript wish list, MSWL, short for manuscript wish list, match, but it should at least be a genre match. Right. And not not having that correct to me shows just a tiny bit of laziness because presumably you're typing in the email and you're spelling my name right there or you're at the, my query form and everything is right on the top. So if yeah. you're getting it wrong, I'm just kind of like, why? <laughs> um, so my number one query tip. Um, so number two we have is personalize your query, but only if you want to or you can. Don't force it. We'll know if it's forced. <laughs> um, yeah. You're getting the wrong clients or you have you point out a tweet that we never tweeted. Um, only personalize <laughs> if you absolutely can. <laughs> Yeah, you, I don't need a long, you know, I'm a big fan of YouTube and things like that. If you have that and you want to say that, go ahead. But if the only way you know anything about the agent is you've researched them on their website, that's enough too. Um, I will say also personalize by putting in the agent's name. Um, we have definitely moved away in a good way in this world from a Ms., Mr., Mrs., unless you know the um, gender preference of the agent, I would just do something simple like, Dear Jessica, Dear Jessica Faust. Um, yeah. I, think, I think it's always safe to use the person's full name if you feel that you need something more formal than just their first name and you don't know what gender preference they, ha they use, then I think just go with the full name. And I will go one step further because this is something that Jessica and I talk about in the office all the time. It's one of those things that drive us crazy. Don't abbreviate the name if it's not that way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am not Jim. She is not Jess. <laughs> don't do it. There's a reason why we don't have that on our website because we don't like to be called those things. No. So just kind of getting the name right. It, this is one and two are sort of similar, but just making sure that you're not calling them out of their name. You're not calling them out of their um, pronouns, anything like that. Yep, um, exactly. Yes, yeah, so the third one is probably even more obvious than those first two, but it's to always check for typos and consistency. Um, we know how the querying process goes. We know it's always getting changed because we're always changing hours for pitches to publishers. Typos happen. Um, details that might have changed in the book that didn't change in the query, they happen. So just always do a little refresher over your query. Make sure that there's no changes. Make sure there's no errors that you don't want there. Um, not saying that we're going to be super critical of those um though if they start to add up it, it does show us something yeah i mean one or two typos you know i think we all understand right we've all done it i have Those certainly sent out queries with typos i've done i have made every error on this list i will guarantee you at some point in 20 yeah. years i've made every error on this however if i'm reading a query and there are consistently multiple typos or grammar errors or just plain old poor writing in a one page query, that's really going to be an automatic pass for me because if there's that much in a query, I can only imagine what a 400 page manuscript contains. Okay. Number four, um, keep it concise. We get a lot of queries and we get a lot of queries that are about three, four, five pages long. 
Um, there's no need for that. 200 to 400 words is probably your, right? Would you agree? I would say 400 is too long. Ah, okay. Well, I'm thinking I, you um, know, not just the blurb for the entire query. Yeah, a standard right. page, one page is about 250 words. And I don't think your query should be longer than a page. You know, in the same way, if you are applying for a job, you're going to be told that your cover letter shouldn't be more than a page. Your query shouldn't be more than a page. I think it is five paragraphs tops, and that's everything. That's your intro, your blurb, your author bio. That means that to me, your blurb, which we will get into in this, is no more than three paragraphs tops. You're not, you know, you're trying to entice somebody and, um, and, and you wanna be short, you know, it's sort of like if you're trying to convince somebody in person to hire you or read your book or go to a movie and you go on and on and on, you're gonna lose that person. And attention. I will confess, I have read a lot of queries and then I get to the end, I'm like, hold on, my eyes crossed. I have to go back, I have to start over. There's a whole lot there that I didn't retain. Um, yeah. and that is sometimes it's, it's going to lose me. I might not go back and redo it. I, I often won't. And if the query is too long, right from the start, sometimes I think, well, this person doesn't know how to edit. I mean, yeah. there's a lot that goes into a query that gives us sort of subconscious opinions or ideas about your book and you as a writer. And like, yeah, sub so much of it is subconscious for us because we look at so many of them that it. It just you once you see it, you get a snapshot of like things that we are already analyzing. Like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> it's a little yeah. checklist. It's a mental checklist for us. And once yeah. we look at a query, we kind of are running through that instinctively. Um, yeah. So these tips are all really to help avoid that mental checklist going awry. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So number five. This is <laughs> Jessica loves this one. Only include what is necessary. So Jessica has a tip that she tells us all the time when we're writing our pitch pitches to publishers you don't have to tell us everything about the book a query just has to get us to read the book yeah so I was um back in um a few lifetimes ago I was a journalist and as a journalist I learned to write very concisely and get to the point you have a lead you grab somebody's attention and you shoot them the main points and you are done and out and that's how I think of queries and like you said, when we are working on our pitches to publishers, I'm I, people don't send them to me as much as they used to, but I am the first one to go in and go, why do I need this information? Why do I need, why do I need this entire section about their friend? Does their friend have something to do with the book? And if you have to explain to me what the friend has to do with the book, then it doesn't belong in the query. Yeah, I'll confess you on camera. Super annoying, but super effective. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, only because we are social distancing, can you yeah. say that? I can't have a book thrown at my head. <laughs> no, but, but it yeah. is super effective. I mean, and, and really grab a bunch of books off your bookshelf and read the cover copy. Preferably books that you've read because you know all of the right. intricacies and the nuances of the story. And you can see when you read that cover copy that they're not there. And we but, say often, it's sometimes easier to write a query when we haven't read the book, which is why I'm going back to another of Jessica's favorite tips is to have a query critique, critique group. group. Yeah, thank you. That was like, eluding me for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's being in isolation, not really talking <laughs> yeah. to people for a while. Yeah. Forgot words. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, oh, so, sorry. Um, I'm, no, I'm sorry. So yeah, absolutely that... Um, you want to really focus on the key selling points of the book because that's what your query is. It is selling the book to the agent. So it's not about all these secondary characters. It's not about the color of the character's hair. It's not about all of these lovely things from the book, but it has nothing to do with selling the book. Right, exactly. Yeah, your book will do that on its own. It's just yep. getting people to want to read it. Yep. Um, okay, so number six, third person blurbs only, please. I um, do not like a query in the point of view of the character in first person. It should be like you're reading the back of a book. It's somebody is telling you about this book in third person, introducing all of the characters. Um, you're losing a lot of introduction when you're doing first person, I think. 
um and you it, it's strange <laughs> it's just it's it's weird and yeah and sometimes I find it so weird I get a little creeped out <laughs> because if it's written in first person and it's not a memoir it clearly says fiction I start to go to this confusing place of, is this the author talking? Is this the yeah. character? And then I start to think, does the author think they are the character? Yeah, and also ju just treat it like you are a person presenting your book. And my hands are still flying even on Zoom. But presenting your book, you are not your book. <laughs> okay, number seven. Tell us the important technical stuff. So a lot of times things get buried and not included, but we always, always, always need to know your genre, your word count, um, even maybe the point of view of the book. Is it multiple point of view? Is it first person, third person? I like yeah. to know that. Not everyone does. Um, not everyone cares, I should say, but all of those things should be in the query. I think everybody wants to know it. Oh, good. Okay. I think it's important. And I, oh, up here. No, I'm sorry, point of view. No, I don't think point of view is important. I think genre and word count and title are important. But for some yes. people, point of view could be. Um, I do, because I, you know, sometimes I, I prefer one over the, I don't know. I like to know. <laughs> yeah, so I, I feel like, like include it. I feel like however the POV writ is written has to prove itself in the book. So I don't really care either way. But it is important. Now, I know there is some, you know, do you start out with the genre, the word count, the title? Do you just wrap it up at the end? I don't care. And I would say most agents don't care. If you prefer it at the beginning, the author has put it at the end. It's easy to buzz through the query and yeah. catch. The, I mean, that stuff pops. Again, you know, mental checklist. Those are the things that we're kind of scanning really fast once we open that. And for us, right. we use Query Manager, and it's right up there at the top when we open a query. Exactly. So it's super easy for most agents to spot. Um, I will say that I know a lot of people do go back. Is it at the beginning? Is it at the end? I think that the easiest way to set it up, uh, this is just a suggestion, is introduction, blurb, then all the technical stuff at the end. Just because it, it just feels more natural for it to flow. So if you're ever concerned is it in the right spot you can just follow that guideline and you're not going to be wrong you're not going to be wrong wherever you put it as long as you have it yeah okay number eight this is a good one only include necessary biography information so when you're putting who you are at the bottom of the book i don't need to know your entire life story when you were born where you were born just the things i don't need that, that you are, i don't need to know that you started writing when you were eight no. or 13 or even 15. I just, I don't care when you started and I don't care how old you are now. Or how long it took you to write the book. I just think that getting um, any relevant work experience, if there is any previous publication history, um, if you want to include where you're from, that's something, but I don't, I wouldn't go beyond that. And honestly, your bio for fiction, for nonfiction, it's going to be yeah. a little different, but for fiction, your bio doesn't need to be more than three, four sentences. Yeah. If you have no writing experience, that's fine. If you are a part of- This would be of, my debut novel. Yeah, and if you're part of a major writing organization, mention that because it shows that you're serious and yeah. actually doing the work on the book. If you have a life experience or career or something that relates to the book, I think that can be important. You know, if you're a lawyer and you're writing about a lawyer, a doctor writing about a doctor, if you're a stay-at-home mom writing about a stay-at-home mom, mention that. I think that's yeah. important. I like to know a little bit of a tidbit. I like to know maybe where you're from. I like yeah. something so that I have a sense of who you are. And that might help us connect you too. Like if somebody's from Minnesota, obviously, then you kind of perk up a bit. Yeah, if somebody tells me they're from Staten Island, I'm quitting for Jack. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You say that with James Quilliam's book right behind you. <laughs> Staten Islander. Sorry, James. <laughs> he would agree, honestly. <laughs> anyway, we digress again. Well, look, we're like back to ourselves. <laughs> we are, yeah. We fall right back into our old habits. <laughs> But yeah, um, okay. definitely Sorry. include a bio just you know make it kind of personal fun you know and if you don't have anything don't stress about it yeah and just to go back to your point about nonfiction, this is important in a nonfiction yes. query you should be this probably should be one of your longer paragraphs you should be really stressing your platform here it's going to be in your proposal as well but um getting that in there and showing the agent why you're the right person to write this book even in your query is really important i really need a big bio 
in a nonfiction query yeah. because I am looking at your idea, but if I see that you don't have a platform, that may make my decision just to pass on seeing more. If I'm debating, if I'm debating the idea because it's another leadership book, I need a big platform for a leadership book. So yeah. I need to see that in the query. I need to see what kind of social, I don't need all the details in the bio, but I need some social media numbers. I need to know that you regularly speak. I need to know if you're a consultant, what kind of clients you've represented, what kind of companies you've worked for. I need you to know- You teach matter. Yeah. So I need to know who you are that's going to sell this book. So if, if you're writing nonfiction, and that's anything, that's just not business books, that's a memoir, that's anything, you really need to have a bulky bio. Yeah, and we have videos on both fiction platform and nonfiction platform somewhere in the backlog. So definitely take a look at them. They're, they're um, if we do say so ourselves, pretty helpful. Yes. Um, okay, so we've got two tips left. Number nine, <laughs> I think I actually wrote this one. Don't be weird. You totally <laughs> wrote this one. <laughs> be personable, prioritize um, professionalism and respectfulness though. Don't comment on an agent's looks. Oh no. Don't, no, never. Unnecessary. Don't. And there's so many ways that you can be weird. I don't even want to go through them. Just don't do it. It's, well, I think we sort of touched on it when we're saying like pitching to the dog yeah, or, or talking and stuff, pretending you're the character writing about the author is a little yeah. weird. Yes. I, I don't want you commenting on our looks. Definitely compliment us, but not on our looks. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You can tell us how funny we are. That's not. Weird. Oh yeah, well we're never gonna, <laughs> never gonna deny it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's it. The important thing to remember is, no matter what, this is a business correspondence. You want your voice to come through. You know, if you're writing humor, you can be a little humorous. You know, you want the sense of you to come through. And yeah. I mean, I guess if you're really super weird, then that's gonna. Come uh, then you really can't turn it down. But you know, <laughs> be weird to the other person. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so don't be weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and our last one, probably the most important one, above all, the blurb is the most important thing. So yeah. that, that's what you really should be practicing and perfecting and getting critiqued and getting looked at by other eyes and um, making sure that that is the shining crown jewel of your query letter, because essentially it's the most important part. Yeah, and we've talked a lot about blurbs in other videos. Certainly on the website, there's a lot about it. We have talked about doing just a video on crafting a blurb. And we're going to put something like that together if it isn't already. Um, but, you know, our suggestion is don't make the blurb an afterthought. Start your blurb as you're writing your book and before you're writing your book. And as you're getting to know what that book is, because your blurb is the cover copy. It's that concise look at your book. It's the hook. It's your marketing tool. And your book should, you know, if you have, when you start your book, you can actually write to the blurb. As the book changes, change the blurb to make sure you still have that strong hook and a marketing tool. But there are so many times that is the only thing we read. And it's yeah. almost always, it's the first thing I really read. I mean, I'll glance at everything else. I read the blurb. And then if the blurb has grabbed me, I will go through and evaluate everything else. But also keep in mind, this whole process takes no more than a few minutes. I'm reading a one page letter. So all of this is happening in a few minutes when I make that decision. It's not like I'm spending hours staring at your query. And that decision is largely instinctive. Yeah. So getting these things right is going to help us to focus on what's most important here. And that's your book and your blurb. And yeah. if all the other things are sort of out of whack, it kind of takes away from us making that really instinctive decision on your book. Um, mm -hmm. So just making it, I know that this sounds like, oh, make it so easy for the agents, but making it easy isn't just for the agents. It also benefits you in the long run. Um, so, you know, those are our best 10 tips. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about it as the way you buy books. And I know I repeat this in every query video, but I it's think true. this is the truth. You know, all of the stuff in the query letter is what you find on the book cover. You know, you get a sense for the, you don't see word count, but you can tell by the thickness of the book generally where the word count lies. Yeah. You know, obviously there's a title. You can tell the genre it's actually on the spine. 
you have your cover copy, which is your blurb, and you have your author bio. You glance at all of that, and that makes your decision on whether to buy your book. You don't stand there for hours and debate whether you're going to buy that book. You glance at it. You skim the blurb. Sometimes you only read a few sentences. You either put it back or you put it in your cart. And that is no different than the way agents read queries. Yeah, so these are our 10 best query tips. We hope that they're helpful to you. Um, again, there's plenty of query advice on the Bookends YouTube channel. So definitely scroll through the query tip playlist. Um, yeah, so don't forget to like and subscribe because we subscribe. will be doing Zoom videos now. <laughs> and yes. This is a thing. Yes, and stay well and stay safe, everybody. And um, yeah, we're going to do more of these because they're working. <laughs> yeah, we will see you next week or tomorrow or what is days? I don't know. So <laughs> good luck. <laughs> be safe and be well. Bye-bye.